Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. It is always a joy for me to meet you through this broadcast. And every time I know that God has solutions for life's challenges. And that is why we get into the word because this word is a book of solutions. Anything can be sorted out. If you feel that someone has told you that something cannot be sorted out, I tell you, it's not the truth. God's word is the greatest problem solver. Today, as we are in the special season of celebrating the birth of Christ, which is wonderful, by the way, we're going to see the goodness that the birth of Christ brings us. So I want to call this teaching as the goodness of the gospel. I know you're ready to hear. Shall we go? When Christ was born in this world, that is 2000 years ago, it is a recorded truth, recorded in the timeline of history, his birth, his death and his life and everything that happened through his ministry. Apart from the Bible, history tells. And one of the great history speakers is the Bible and the Word of God itself. So it is the good news. It's called as the gospel. Gospel, go and spell. Jesus commanded his disciples to go and spell, go and speak. And that is the gospel. Now, gospel means good news. Good news is always a wonderful thing. When someone gets engaged or someone's getting married, that's good news. When uh, someone gets a good job or promotion, that's good news. Someone gets a baby, that's good news. So on and on and on. These are good news. In a world that is filled with a lot of bad news, these are good news. And many times the impact of the good news and the range that the good news goes is maybe to a few families. For example, when someone builds a new house, he invites his friends, his families, maybe 50, 100 of them. They come and celebrate. And so 100 people are impacted by the good news. Sometimes it might be a smaller crowd for another situation or scenario. Uh, it, it can be a larger crowd for a marriage. Uh, in a place like India, people, you know, when they get married, there can be, you know, people coming, even for a small wedding, people, as many as 200 or even more, 400, 500. You know, average is like 500 plus people come and celebrate the marriage. But that is the, the span to which the good news impacts. But there is one good news, which is the gospel that impacted the whole world and continues to impact. And that's for every human being of every race, creed, color, uh, whatever, tribe, language, nation. And we find that in Luke chapter two, Verse 10 and 11, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings, which is good news of great joy. Look at that great joy, which will be to all people. So this good news brings great joy. Verse 11, for there is born to you this day in the city of David, which is Jerusalem, a savior who is Christ the Lord. So birth of Jesus, the Savior, the birth of Jesus, the Savior is a good news of great joy. And what we see is it is 
to all people. All people means everyone on planet earth. Everyone who was there at that time when Jesus was born and ever since. Every, every child born, every nation from every kindred and tribe and race and language. A savior, someone who saves each one of us from our sins. Oh, that's good news. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Look at that. The, the breadth and length and the span. He loved the whole world. It's good news to the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That whosoever, look at that, to every man, whosoever, not just, it doesn't say to, ev to, to all, but specifically to whosoever who believes in him shall not die or be separated from God anymore, but have eternal life, the God kind of life. You can flourish in hard times. You can be blessed. You can be healed. You can be uh, receiving good, no matter how difficult your ancestors have gone through whatever curses they have been through, they have been under. You can live a life of blessing. Jesus came to save. And that's the best news, by the way. That's for every person. That's for the whole world. It's length and breadth. It spans, I mean, the whole world. I'm excited about that. You can see that. And I'm getting excited because this is good news unlike, you know, buying a vehicle, unlike building a house, unlike, you know, getting married. As good as those news may be, but this is a never-ending good news. And it's for the whole world. And that's for you. I tell you, today is a day of good news for you. No matter whatever you're facing today, whatever your challenges, I want to tell you, I'm here to tell you, God has sent me to tell you, there's good news for you. A savior, someone who's about to save you. He's ready to save you. Hallelujah. He has come to save you. Maybe you feel like you're drowning in that ocean and no one is there. You, you've cried for help. You're tired. You're you're too, too tired and you're not able to swim and you feel that every other hour you're losing life, strength. But I want to tell you, the Savior is reaching out to you. You're not giving up. No, 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 don't give up. He's about to pull you out and that is good news. I want to quickly give you how Jesus saves, how he saves and how he is the savior. The beauty, the good things in this good news, the glory in this good news, the, the beauty in this good news, all right? Number one, we read from the words of the father of John the Baptist, who is Zechariah the priest. You know, Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth did not have kids for a long, long time. And then one day the angel of the Lord comes and tells that they're going to have a son who will prepare the ways for Jesus Christ. That is, John the Baptist would be born before Jesus and his ministry would be to prepare the way that Jesus could, could come and do his ministry as a savior. So John the Baptist speaks how Jesus would be a savior in Luke chapter 1, verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Ain't that amazing? That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. I want to read 74. To grant us that we being delivered from, uh, from, the hands of our en from the hand of our enemies might serve him, serve God without fear. So in both these verses, we see deliverance, salvation from the hands 
of our enemies. And it even says the hand of all who hate us. Now, as we live on this earth, there is an enemy and that is the devil. The devil, you know, Jesus calls him the thief. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. He's the stealer. He's a killer. He's a destroyer. You know, he steals peace. He steals, uh, he, he uh, kills uh, wealth and health. And he destroys the soul. That's the devil. And he, he uses situations. Sometimes he uses peoples. Sometimes he uses someone. Maybe you, you have gone through so much in life, you have been good to others, but you can point out, think about people who have, who have risen against you, who wanted your downfall, who wanted to see you crushed, destroyed, who wanted to see your life break into pieces, your heart uh, be broken into pieces. And for no reason, you, you didn't mean evil for them. You meant good for them. So the enemies, but I want to tell you, Jesus is the Savior. The good news is, you know, Jesus has come to save you and me and everyone from the hand of all those who hate us, all our enemies, no matter what kind of enemy you have been facing. Oh, you might say, Pastor, I've been facing a lot of enemies right where I live. People don't like me prospering. People don't like my children prospering. You know, oh, some time ago, there was someone who was trying to ask for prayer from a particular place and uh, she took an appointment and she was sharing about uh, how she had, had come to Christ and God has been prospering her, but people around her uh, were so jealous of her. They used to curse her. They used to release spells against her. But you know what? In spite of whatever they have done, you know, she had come to Christ. She had put her trust on Christ. And God was delivering her. God had delivered her. God had been blessing her. You've been blessing her children to do well in their studies, uh, to, to secure good positions in life. Why? Because Jesus is the great deliverer. The Bible says that, you know, he, he came and, and he died for us on the cross to deliver us from the fears, especially the fear of of death to deliver us from all fears amen praise god if you have been going through fear fear about your future fear about tomorrow fear about what is going to be in the next year to come 2024 fear about whatever it is people Fear about if you can measure up to what is expected in your job. Fear about the future of your children. Whatever it may be, I want to tell you today, Jesus is the Savior who delivers you from all kinds of fears. Somebody shout an amen. The psalmist says that I cried unto the Lord in Psalm 34, and he delivered me from all fears. Why should you fear? There's no need to fear when, when God is with you, when God delivers you. He delivers you from sin. He delivers you from sickness. He delivers you from fears. He is the great Deliverer, praise God, hallelujah. Oh, that, that you can live a life that is free. What's the meaning of deliverance? 
It's a life of freedom. Freedom to be free. Freedom to be joyful. Freedom to proclaim His greatness. Freedom that you can live your life away from the violence and the hatred and the evil eye and the jealousy of people. Oh my, 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 praise God. Jesus means deliverer. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says in Joel chapter 2 verse 32, he who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Meaning when you call on Jesus, you call out Jesus, then he becomes your deliverer. Secondly, we see the words of a man called a Simeon. He is a devout man. When Mary and Joseph bring baby Jesus to the temple to be dedicated, Simeon speaks a beautiful word about Jesus. In verse 32 of Luke chapter 2, he says, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So he talks about Jesus as the light. Now, the opposite of light is darkness. And darkness stands for so many things. Darkness stands for evil. Darkness stands for uh, hopelessness people you know who get lost they become hopeless they are in dark uh, darkness stands for a confused state of mind darkness stands uh, for for a kind of getting stranded in light in life but jesus is the opposite of darkness if you read john chapter 1 uh, you read verse 4 and 5. The Bible talks about how in Jesus, in him was light. And the light was, in him was life. And the life was light to all men. Praise God. Now, and the light shines in darkness. That's what it says there. And darkness could not ever overcome it. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He said, he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will be in light. Amen. So when you invite Jesus into your heart, he is a savior. The good news is whether in whichever part of the world you may live in Africa or Asia or America or Australia or Europe, light defeats darkness. Whatever part of the day, whatever situation, light overcomes darkness. And that's so usual. That's, that need not be a special, you know, armed force to back up light. No, light defeats darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. When he comes into your heart, he gives you light, meaning he gives you hope. Because he says, I have a plan and I have a future for you. I have thoughts to prosper you and not to harm you. Praise the Lord. And when light is with you, when Christ is with you, you can defeat whatever fear there is hope you will have hope for life there is hope for your future the bible says surely there is an end there is hope for your future hallelujah your hope shall not be cut off because jesus is the light now you may ask me what's the guarantee what's the surety how can i believe you know, when they planned Jesus to be crucified and 
It was all in the great plan of God that he would give his life for the redemption of mankind, shed his blood. He was buried. So it seemed like temporarily darkness had overcome. His enemies were, were jubilating, were celebrating. But on the third day, the Bible says he rose up from the dead. He is alive. You can go to Israel today. And there's a place where you see the tomb of Christ is no more closed and it's written, He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Light cannot be buried. Light will rise again and Jesus rose again. So that Jesus is your Savior. He is your light. And the hope He gives can dispel all your fears. Can deliver you from all hopelessness and whatever depressing situation you might find yourself being caught in, I tell you, when Jesus is in your life, he sets you free. You're out of that depressing situation, that depressed dead, no more under depression. You become joyful, you become peaceful, you become blessed. So we saw that the Savior Jesus is our deliverer. And we see that he is our light and our hope. And we see another thing. Oh, beautiful. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1. To Joseph, the foster parent, father of Jesus. You know, the angel came and spoke to him. Matthew, chapter 1. Verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And that's number three. Jesus is the Savior. And the good news, the goodness about the good news that Jesus is the Savior is when you invite him into your life, he is with you. Oh, that's awesome. He will never leave you nor forsake you. There won't be a time he will give up on you. He, he is for you. And the Bible says when God is, if God be for us, nobody, no one can be against us. Amen. Amen. And Psalmist says, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do unto me? Praise God, because God is with me. Even if you walk through waters, even when you walk through fires, when your friends have left you, when those you love forsook you, and when everybody is gone, I tell you one person will never leave you, and that is Jesus. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. You can be so sure that he he is with you. And what a strength that gives you. What a great confidence that gives you. May God bless you today. May this word sink deep into your heart. As you're going to celebrate Christmas, a Savior is born. And he died and he rose again. And the good news is he is your deliverer. Call unto him, Jesus, come into my heart. And he is, he is your deliverer. When you call unto him Jesus, he is your hope giver. When you call unto him Jesus, he is with you. He will never ever forsake you. He'll help you. And you'll be a star. You'll be a victor. You will never be a victim. And those of you who want to say, yes, I need this Savior in my heart. You can have. It's a matter of inviting him into your heart. And that's the best thing that you can have for Christmas. More than the Christmas cake, the Christmas star, the Christmas decoration, the Christmas tree, the gifts. About everything, it's really having a personal relationship with the Savior. Those of you who want to have that experience, I want you to pray with me. Just pray after me. Say it with your voice, believing in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you for coming into this world 
taking my sins, taking my place, and shedding your blood for me. Thank you, Jesus. I believe in you. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart and give me a new life. Jesus, I receive you as my Savior, as my Deliverer, as my Light, and as my God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, I know the Lord has come into your heart and the Savior is with you. He will never leave you. Now I want to pray that God will set you free from whatever you've been going through. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for everyone who's watched today's program and I speak your blessing, your deliverance upon their lives. In your name, Jesus, there is deliverance. Whatever had been holding them, if it is Lord's sickness, let it go in the name of Jesus. If it is curse that's been following them like a dark shadow, in the name of Jesus, let it go. Hallelujah. I speak the person be free from whatever habits they want to be free right now. And those of them who need that hope, that glimmer of hope in the name of Jesus. They shall have that hope. May light arise in their lives, in their horizon. May light be seen at, in that tunnel, the dark tunnel that they've been searching for, going through, Father. In Jesus' name, I speak that you will be a friend to be with them, to guide them, to help them, to bless them and to always embrace your child. Lord, thank you for your answered us. I speak blessing upon your children in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, what a wonderful day it has been. I believe you've been blessed. If you feel blessed, do let us know, write an email, drop an email. Uh, we'll be glad to glorify God. And uh, for those of you who gave your heart to the Lord, find a wonderful, Bible-based church and, and go there. And not only that, um, I would want to encourage you to write us and let us know. If you've been blessed through this word you can, and you want to share this with someone, you can go to our um, YouTube channel. It's English Space FCC. FCC is Fountain of Compassion Church. And you can subscribe, click the bell icon, share this word to somebody whom you think this Christmas message will be a blessing. May God bless you. I'll see you again next week.